Well, good evening, my friends. This is Eric Lamar, your host of A Whole New Me Show, and let's make sure this thing is dialed in right. Hope everybody's having a fantastic evening, and you've chosen happiness today. Let me know where you're listening in from tonight. We've got a very special tip that I'm going to be sharing with you regarding credit. So let me just check something real quick. All right, perfect. We got sound. Everything's working. Let me know where you're listening in from uh, as you're coming on board and get your pen and paper out. Tonight's tip can help you increase your credit score 25 to 50 points in the next 30 days. Now, why is credit so important? It's really important because, you know, I don't know if you're like myself, a person that's looking forward to purchasing uh, investment property or another home and so forth. By the way, there are some great loan programs out there. And if you can achieve a minimum of 720 credit score, you wanna connect with my man, Gilbert Bennett, at My Easy Mortgage. They've got some 1% down products. We were just discussing this yesterday. And 720, 740, it really starts at 680, but the best benefits come in if you've got a score 660, 760, excuse me, 760 or higher. So that's real important. But as it relates to your credit, if you are a person that's been working on your credit or you're conscious about your credit, you understand the benefits of having great credit. I mean, the rates you pay on your car loans are different. The rates you pay on your mortgage loans are different. The rates you pay on car insurance is different than someone that has worse credit than you. And so being able to obtain a credit card to just simply rent a car is so critical when you have good credit. So good credit is it's just simply a reflection of your character on paper so when you take care of your business, it just transcends into so many other aspects of your life. So I promise you a great tip. I want you to think about something. When you get your credit card statement, there's, some, there's two pieces of information that's always on your statement. One is your closing cycle date of you know, how everything is calculated with your interest and everything and then you have a due date. And that due date of your credit card is when you need to have your payment into the credit card company. But there is a third piece of information that's never on your statement that is oftentimes overlooked. And this is, write this down, your reporting date. You see, there is a date that your credit card company reports your a snapshot picture of the balance of your account to the credit bureaus. And that is not the same as the due date, okay? So, why is this important? Because you could have been making your payments on time all the time. And you know when you get your payment in, then you can go ahead and charge on your card because you've made your minimum balance or you made your payment. But the date that they take a snapshot is typically two, three, four, maybe five days later than the due date. So let's use some real exact numbers. Let's say you have a credit card that has a $10,000 limit. Rule of thumb, to not negatively impact your credit score, you always want to maintain a balance when it's reported of less than 30% of the credit limit. So let's use better numbers. Let's say you have a $9,000 limit. So that means when the credit bureau takes that snapshot and sends that report to the credit reporting agency, you don't want your balance more than $3,000. So ideally you want it at $2,999 so that you can be under the 30% threshold of, uh, that's I guess that's 33%. So if we can use, you know, $3,000, you're good. 
So let's say what happens typically to most people is you get your payment in, they you know, apply it to your account, and then you start charging on your card immediately. Well, when they take that snapshot, you've already made your payment, which they're gonna report you as in good standing, but if you run that card balance up, they're gonna report your higher balance. So if you've always noticed that on your credit report, it doesn't seem like your balance is going down, it's because when you are making, um, you are charging on it, and you are not making sure that that balance is below 30% on the reporting date. So there's three dates that's important. Your closing date, your due date, but the most important is your reporting date. The day they take a picture. So here's what happened to me. I've shared so many transparent stories with everyone. So as you remember, I told you how my credit score on my Experian particularly went from a 582 to an 803. And then I applied for some credit, got some credit cards, inquiries will bring your score down a little bit. And I was sitting around a 780. I got a credit card and that credit card had a very nice limit on it. And then I called because I already knew I need to know these important dates. Well, the company informed me that my mine wouldn't be reported till after my billing cycle. So they said, your billing cycle's on the first. So I started using my card. Two weeks in, I fell on the cycle that they reported. And they reported the balances that I'd already started using on this card. And I was above the 30% threshold. I was almost at 50% of the card because I knew I would... They had already told me. I thought I had time. My credit took a 90 point hit because I was above the 30%. So I looked at the date in which that happened. I was upset, I was frustrated, but this is all a learning lesson. So I said, okay, let's see what happens when that balance, when it reports the following month. So the following month, I made sure that that balance was below the 30% threshold and I got a 50 point spike. So I gained back 50 points of that 90 that I lost. So it's very critical that you make sure that the balance on your account on the day they send the report to the credit reporting agencies is below the 30% threshold. And then do what you wanna do. You will hear some gurus will tell you never run up your balances on your credit cards. That's incorrect. I run the balances up on my cards all the time. I use them in business. But then I will pay it back down by, I know on this particular card, it's the fourth of the month. So what I do now on every one of my credit cards, I have a list. I need to know what the reporting date is when you submit this to the credit bureaus. So I know each of my cards, I will strategically operate and work those cards and make sure my balances are below the 30%. When you start doing this and you start mastering this, you will start to see your credit scores start going up because that 30% uh, threshold is so important. So I hope this tip is very helpful for you. I also wanna remind you that if you're really looking for help and you want to improve your credit, remember this, there are more than three credit bureaus. I used to talk about nine reports. Well, now there's 10 that we pull for our clients. So if you're interested in our service where we will order these 10 reports for you, it's a very small fee, but we manually order these reports because when you electronically order things online, sometimes you're doing more damage to your ability to correct your credit than taking advantage of something that's quick and simple. Because when you do online ordering, you have to verify certain things, items that are on your credit. And if it's something you're wanting to dispute later on or get removed and you verify it, you just shot yourself in the foot. So there are reasons why we do what we do and why we've gotten the results. And if I hadn't shared this with you, great news, um, 
two bankruptcies that were reporting on Equifax. I made a phone call to another reporting agency that they said they were getting the information from and I finally got them to send a message and now Equifax has deleted two bankruptcies. So two bankruptcies I have been fighting for seven months have been deleted off of three of four bureaus. Let me share one last story with you. This is why we try to help people understand it's important that you really learn this credit game because these bureaus are out here having conversations and looking at each other. Here's proof. So I had some inquiries that uh, came up on my credit report that I wanted to get off. So what I always do is whenever I send a letter of no permissible purpose to the bureaus, I always like to fax in my, my documentation, then I follow it up with the mail, hard copies in the mail. Experian doesn't have a fax that you can send to them, but they have a website where you can upload documents. Well, I didn't know that at that time, so when I called, I asked the lady for a fax number, and what she told me was, we don't have that, but here's a website you can upload. But would you like for me to make any disputes for you? And I said, yeah, yeah, go ahead. So I told her, I said, yeah, I've been a victim of some identity theft. And what happened on that part was that I, I pulled a report. I've pulled about 18, 19 reports on myself. Yes, there are that many different credit bureaus. But because I knew I was going to be looking for an apartment, I wanted to pull reports on anything related to apartments, check evictions, check any kind of issues with apartments. And so I pulled this one report from a company called leasingdesk.com. And when I got this report, unfortunately, I realized that there was a young man out of Las Vegas that had been using Eric Smith as an alias and it was attached to my name, my social, and my address. And I'm like, there's no way in the world that I want to be applying for, and he was a sex offender. I said, I can't be associated with anyone like that. So I called, they got it deleted, they got it corrected. But in the meantime, I filed a police report and then I also filed a report with the identitytheft.gov. Very critical, I just dropped some jewels on you there, but I'm getting back to this conversation I had with Experian. So I told them that I'd had some identity theft issues and so forth, and I have these inquiries, and I wanna make sure they get deleted. So the lady goes in and puts all the companies, and she says, okay, I'm also going to forward this to, get this, TransUnion, so that if there's anything on your report there, they know that this was fraudulent and they can delete it. And I said, do what? You go, I'm saying this to myself. I didn't want to question her. All I did was thank you. And I proceeded to let her know that she had been the most helpful person that I've ever spoken to when dealing with credit bureaus. Because it's always a frustrating time. And I said, by the way, since you're able to <clears throat> let TransUnion know, would you also let them know that they're the only bureau reporting a couple of bankruptcies, that you have deleted it, Equifax has deleted it, and LexisNexis has deleted it. Would you just let them know that? She said, sure, I'll put that in the report. I said, I'll be damned. If it's been that easy all this time, I've been fighting the wrong battle. But it's interesting because I'm constantly learning and I'm paying attention to little things and I'm looking at reports and I'm reading reports and you have to read the fine print. There is so much information on your credit report that can give you clues as to how to win the game. So I hope you can appreciate that story, but remember the tip, always get your payments into the credit bureaus before the reporting date so that the day they take a snapshot you're at least under the 30% and you should experience 25 to 50, possibly more. Now, start doing that. Please give me your feedback. Tell me what happens. Call your credit card companies tonight. Ask them, when do you report to the credit bureaus? Okay? And then start making sure your payments are in. Tell me what happens. I would love a full report. And if you want a link, 
for our service to help you order the 10 bureaus. And if you would like some assistance, let me know. We also have a done with you class that is scheduled to start next week if you're interested in enrolling in that in the Tampa, St. Petersburg, Clearwater area. We're here to hold your hand in this class. It's gonna be six months. So we wanna get you started this month and by the holidays, we wanna help you be qualified for a mortgage. So if you're interested, inbox me, let me know, or shoot me an email at I am Eric Lamar. I'm sorry, excuse me. Email me at Eric Lamar at a whole new me show.com or feel free to text me 727 313 0944. It's been great. Thanks for the time that you just shared with me tonight. You'll never get this time back, but I hope I made it valuable for you and you can turn it into some profits. Have a great night.